Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching. In this video, we're going to talk information objects, right? We don't have enough videos on this channel about the CMDB, and this topic comes up once in a blue moon. It just came up at work today, and I was like, I can't believe I don't have a video on information objects. Who wouldn't want to know more about information objects? All right, so what are they? In the CSTM, in the Common Service Data Model, there is a domain called Design. In the Design domain, there is a CI class called Information Objects. Information Objects live on the CMDB CI Information Object table within the CMDB. And what you can do, or what these are, I'll show you right here if we go to the documentation. So information Objects are types of information that a business, application, or any other entity handles. So here I've got an example, employee salary data, employee personal data, sales data. I want you to think about PII, PHI, credit card numbers, first name, last name, social security number, address, phone number. These are all types of information people are working with every day. And how cool would it be to know which servers have PII, which databases have employee data, which um, you know, network servers or what, I don't know, what it fill in the blank, what has access to this data so that when you're prioritizing an incident, vulnerability management, something else, you know where to go look. Now, you probably haven't heard of this because it usually comes up in the risk part of ServiceNow, the privacy management part of ServiceNow, or application portfolio management, which is part of the strategic portfolio management suite of products, right? So it's heavily used there to plan around your application life cycles, understanding which tech stacks have things, and on the privacy side, sometimes things are exposed, and that could be PII, PHI, or those specific granular things that I just mentioned. So what does this look like inside the CMDB if you were to actually associate this with something? Well, let's take a look here. I pulled up some examples. You can see in my demo environment, I've got about 67 of them. And what's cool here is you've got computer games, email address, date of birth, driver's license number, right? You can see all the examples in that green box there. But when I click on one of these, let's go customer date of birth. Here's the kind of things you can say about the information object. What's its data classification? Internal, public, confidential, highly sensitive. Who owns it? Who's responsible for that information object in your organization? What business unit? What department? How do you describe this information object? Really simple here, but really, really powerful. And let me show you why. I'm gonna go to uh, the CMDB and I'm gonna open up servers. And I'm just gonna wanna find all the different, let's actually go to uh, Windows servers. So we got all the Windows servers and I see I've got some out there. I got 346 in demo. I went to Azure, AWS. Um, let's see, we've got this Azure Shared Comp2 D16 V3 server. And I wanna say, because I wanna start tracking this for my organization, that this server has a certain types of information on it. So what do you do? Um, if you look just above my head, I'll zoom in here in post, I've got the relationship builder. So I'll go ahead and here, click the plus sign, and I get the suggested types of relationships there at the top, right? So we're gonna let this load here for a second. It's gonna load a filter. And what I'm actually looking for is I'm gonna use um, the uses, the application or the server uses that. I mean. You could get into a big debate over hosts, contains, uh, whatever that is, but you decide in your organization what the standard is going to be. Make sure that's documented and people are using the same type of relationship so it's not confusing. So I said I wanted to use uses. It's still running here. Let me pause for a second, clip out some wait time here. All right, there we go. So. One of my suggested one is uses, and I'm going to say it uses and the, the server is actually the parent. I'm going to get rid of all of these filters down here um, because I just want where the class is an information object. So I'm just going to change this here to class and we'll select that there and we'll say is an information object. Pick that there. I'm gonna run the filter, and then down below, I should see those same information objects that we saw in the previous screen. There you go, customer full name, their gender, their job position, their maiden name, their political affiliation, telephone number, trade you do. I mean, this is all sensitive information that you may wanna associate with this. So we can just pretend that this particular server has a bunch of employee information on it. I'm just gonna check off as many employee ones as I can there, and, uh, and then we're done 
with adding all those configuration items as relationships. So there they are. Now they're all gonna be associated with this particular CI and I've got that documented. And so the next time that your boss, the director, the VP, the CIO says, oh my gosh, we need to prioritize this vulnerability and we need to protect financial information or we need to protect customer information. Or we need to protect health information. This is your solution. It's available in the CMDB. It's a platform wide thing. You don't need APM. You don't need uh, privacy or risk management in order to use these information objects in your CMDB. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe or share it with somebody who you think might be interested in protecting their information as information objects in their CMDB. Until next time, don't forget to always be learning.